and whatever you do, don't touch this. <laughs> don't touch it. I won't touch it. What's up guys, welcome back to another video. In the end of my last video, I was saying how dad was jonesing towards painting this car and we're actually getting closer to it. We're priming it today, actually getting it ready right now as I speak, so I gotta be quick about this. The body work, most, of, most all the heavy body work has been done. This car took almost an entire four by eight sheet of metal between the floorboards and the doors and the rockers and quarter panels. It soaked up about a four by eight sheet of metal and some body parts from another car. The front fender section over here is new. The back tail fin on the driver's side is new. Tons of body work down both sides of the car have been done. It's just been insane. But a lot of pre-body work has already been done as far as getting dents out, bondo, sanding, and spray priming and checking the work and now it's time to prep saw it which just means wipe it down with a rag and prep all which is uh, gets all the oil off from your fingerprints and your hands and any oils on the car have to be gone because paint won't stick to oil so we've got to wipe the whole car down with prep saw and then mix up the primer and go ahead and shoot so you can see it's been taped off the dash has been taped off some of the trim around the headlights have been taped off this right here is a lot harder to do than it looks taping off this el camino emblem is not an easy job but taking that emblem off is even harder because of where it's placed in the fender you almost cannot get to it with your hand and guess what's going to happen if you do get to it and try and take it off the tabs behind it'll break off so best thing to do is just leave well enough alone tape it off and keep it moving windows have been taped off all the trim has been taped off. Again, I'll throw up some pictures of what this car looked like before. Literally pulled it out of a junkyard. Yeah, this was absolutely terrible. I can't stress enough how bad the side of this car was right here. All the way down the door was a big crease in it. Coming through the back. Uh, if you remember this entire section right here, um, was cut out and replaced with another section of another tail fin that was acquired when the car was bought. So, yeah, this was cut out right here, like literally just cut out all the way over here, cut these tail light sections out and put in an entirely new piece. And this right here is not getting primed because we're going to bedliner it because trying to prep this to paint and whatever, you would have to get all the dents out, make it all perfect. And it's just not going to work that way, especially with all these ribs right here. You'll never get it quite right. And so the best answer is to just bedliner it because if you ever use it, you don't have to worry about scratching the paint and you don't have to get all the dents out and make it look primo and perfect and show quality or whatever. Bedliner covers up a lot of sin and it looks good. So it kills two birds with one stone. It saves a lot of labor. So here we go. Dad's wiping this down with prep saw. Um, it's this stuff right here. Prep all. Put it on a rag. This is just those Scott towels you get from the store, those blue like shop towels. I mean, it's it's pretty convenient because they're already clean. They've never been used or washed before like normal shop rags. So they got no contaminants on them. You put the prep all on it, get it all cleaned up. Those of you that have painted cars before probably know this process, but some people have never painted a car and this is just the process of doing it. You want to do all the body work you can before you prime it because the straighter the car is when you prime it, the less you have to do later because if the car has a bunch of dents in it and you prime it and then you do body work, then you are you have to prime it again. You have to prime the car again because you're going to sand through the primer. You have Bondo you have to primer over. So all the body work you can do before you prime it, the better off you'll be. Just give it one little once over wipe down and that's good enough. Wipe on, wipe off. Because believe it or not, just the oils that are on your fingers when you wipe the car with your hands that is enough to make paint not stick i mean it's very it's very technical even though it doesn't look technical it's very very technical and finicky paint is very finicky and i also have some more positive updates on the 1946 international that's coming later in the video so make sure you stick around then we got to take care of this right now some very positive movement coming down the pike on that front so yeah you're going to want to stick around for that make sure you subscribe so that you see those videos in the future and also I'll talk more about this car in the back right here, which we don't want to talk about right now, but there's definitely something to be said about what's going on here in the back. So just hold on for that.
We got Mr. Supervisor making sure we pour the right amount of primer. He's overseeing things. Right, buddy? Yeah, you know. You know. He's seen many a car get painted around here. So four parts primer, one part activator, two part reducer. I'll go a little heavier on the reducer because it thins it out a little bit. So you can see the divide, the primer on the bottom, which is this, and then your reducer and activator. And you stir it all up and you got your concoction. And you always want to make sure you read your cans. You look, both those cans are the same. Yeah, they pretty much. I mean, are. they pretty much are the same. But if they, ha if this was yellow, you may accidentally pick this up and put twice and, the reducer, twice the reducer in it, and not the activator. <laughs> my, my buddy, did he went in the cans looked the same. He wound up painting the whole car, and it didn't harden. And it, it was such a beautiful paint job, but it would not harden. It wouldn't. Uh, I heard a story. Of, there was one guy who got trigger happy with sanding his car. And before you paint, when you sand your primer, you're supposed to sand it with 400 grit and then you paint it. But, you know, he got real into it and he sanded it with 400 and then he sanded it with 800 and then he sanded it with 1200. I think he went up to 2000 grit sandpaper on this primer. I mean, the primer could have been the paint job by the time he got done with it. It looked so shiny, you know, that fine grit sandpaper. But the problem was, is when he went to paint it, the paint job turned out beautiful. But the first time he went to the car wash, and you know how they have those pressure sprayers at the car wash? When he started spraying it, all the paint started coming off because he sanded it with too fine a grit of sandpaper before he painted it. He hit it with that uh, car wash sprayer and that paint just started coming right off the hood. So yeah, don't sand it too fine before you paint it. 400 grit is about where you want to be. It's gritty enough to where the paint will stick. Whoever uses 400, they had a buddy of theirs that and I know people are going to say something different, but they said, yeah, he tried to do it with six, six or 800. Freaking paint come off. And you got to be careful with that because some guys, they, you know, I get it. I get it. You're trying to come up with a beautiful paint job. I get it. Totally get it. So now that the car is all primed, we're actually going ahead now and painting. This is the final paint for the glove box door, for the ashtray door, and then for the dash. And the reason for this is, is it's the easiest to do right now because the glass is not in it and the car is not painted. 
So this is actually, I think, the best way to progress doing it. I'm not sure what this color is called, but you can see that the dash is already that color, and we're just, uh, it, it, but it's faded, obviously. It's 60 years old, so we're respraying at the factory color, which is not the Tasco turquoise or the color of the roof. It's whatever they had in 1960 is what we're doing again. And uh, yeah, I just want everyone to know, too, um, this is not some fancy, crazy paint gun. Like we're not using, you know, the most expensive things. This gun, I think, is either from Harbor Freight or Walmart, and uh, it's been a great gun. I think some people think the more expensive tool you have, the better job you'll do. And really, it comes down to your skill, your skill level, how you use uh, the tools you have, and all the painting materials to do this was about five hundred dollars. So it just boils down to labor. All right, so today is paint day for the 1960 El Camino. The roof is already painted white and then the body is gonna be painted the factory Tasco turquoise color with a white roof. The white roof really is, sets it off. It's gonna set it off with that with that Tasco turquoise on it. So um, everything is taped off. Dad's going over it with the prep ball right now, and then I'm gonna go over it with a tack rag. It's like a blue rag with like beeswax or something on it. It's just sticky enough to get all the contaminants off, dirt particles, any kind of particles like that. And then gonna mix the paint up and shoot it. We're gonna use single stage urethane paint um, I, everybody has their own preference when it comes to painting cars. Some people use base clear, whatever, but we've used base clear and I mean, we're not very impressed with it. You got to go over the car three times with base, three times with clear. You're going over the car six times and in the long term, it's hard to um, repaint or fix. Single stage paint is easier to fix down the line and it lasts a long time. I don't know why people hate on it. It lasts a very long time. I mean, these cars from the 50s we have in the garage with factory paint on them and uh, they were painted with single stage paint. So. It's good enough for us. So um, anyway, let's get this cracking. The insides of the doors, around the edge of the hood, anything anything that's not, I consider real estate. The little detail areas. And then then I'll, I'll hit what I consider real estate. Right, like the big surfaces. Yeah. Door jams first, everybody's got their own preference, but the thing about it is it's kind of hard to paint the door and then open it up and paint the inside. Hit it, because that's, that's not a critical area. Paint is mixed up and ready to go.
semi metal. Real, real semi metallic, and you gotta kind of paint with a little higher pressure. It's not a flat color. First coat. So yeah, this is a factory color combination, Tasco, turquoise, and emerald white. There was a debate on whether to paint the whole car one color, but we thought it would look better if it was two-tone, you know, the white roof makes it pop. I think you guys will agree, it just gives it a good, you know, extra flair. But the paint job came out pretty dang nice, really happy with it. Dad did a really great job painting it. Make sure you say something down in the comments about that, because even though we're mechanics, uh, over the years of painting our own stuff, Dad's got a pretty good affinity for painting cars, actually. It's like a hidden talent, I think. So now we can put some of the stuff back on, some of the bright work and the chrome and the detail stuff. So now that the paint is dry on the car and the paint is dry on the dash, we are going to install a brand new front windshield. Now, kind of an interesting story how we acquired this windshield. Uh, there was a local shop in Tucson who had a guy come to them and he wanted a windshield for his 1960, 59 or 60 Pontiac. And they said, okay, cool. So they ordered the windshield. He brings the car in and the car is so infested with rats, rat nests, rat turds. You know how mice get in cars over you know, a period of 50 years. And the technician said, it's so dangerous. It's so nasty in there. I'm not installing this windshield until you clean this car out. So they took the car to go clean it out. 
and they never brought the car back. I guess they never got the car cleaned out. So the shop just had this windshield there. So we were able to buy it for a pretty decent price because how many people need a 1960, you know, GM windshield? I mean, it's not really a ton of people and nobody knew it was there. But did you notice a second ago how I was putting that rope in that lip on the windshield? That is how you actually install these windshields. You put a rope around the lip, you put the windshield on the car, and then you pull the rope out, which lips the rubber over the groove, or I, I should say the uh, ridge on the car. You'll see here in a sec, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. There's really no other way to do it, and it's a pretty, uh, pretty genius way. So there's the rope that was already in the lip before we put the window on the car, and you just pull that out, and it basically pulls the lip over the ridge. You can see the ridge in front of the rope, and then the ridge is gone in the back of the rope. And uh, you just do that and you muscle the windshield over while you're doing it and you keep everything nice and sprayed down and wet so you can move the rubber, push the windshield. And you wanna be very careful and delicate because these windshields, they're really, you can't really replace them and um, you, you just, you don't wanna break them. Uh, it's, it sucks. And the reason we bought a new front windshield is because uh, the original one was busted. Uh, if it wasn't busted, we'd, we'd have used it, but you know, it was already broke, so I had to go get a new one. And all we're doing, we're using for lubricant, is soapy water. It's nothing special. And here is the window installed and cleaned and wiped down. I mean, isn't it beautiful? It's really starting to look like a car with that painted dash. You can't even see the glass. It's so freaking clear. And right here, you will you won't see any of this. All the trim will go here. You won't see the rubber. You won't see that paint line. And that's how you do it. But it's came a long way, I mean, in, in pretty record time. I think the first video we put out on this was maybe three or four months ago. Uh, hadn't ran or drove in probably 30 or 40 years. All the way from that to painting it, all that body work. We're welding in half of a fender up front, welding in a tail section in the back from another section of another tail fin from another car. Just an immense amount of work, an immense amount of time. It's just hard to even portray that through video. And an update on the 1946 International. Um, here within the next week or so, we're going to be getting some parts from the subscriber, Patrick. We'll be getting a door and a few other things, so there will be another video on that coming soon. I, I still get comments about that, so it is coming. Just hold your horses. Make sure you subscribe, like, leave some feedback down in the comments, and we'll see you guys in the next one.